how to find the bottleneck for your project. That is a smart question because if you improve the performance of bottlenecks, you improve the performance of your organization. And the bottlenecks act as a permanent break because it slows down projects. And when you can release it, then projects will run much faster. While you think that spotting a bottleneck is easy, it is where the work is piling up and projects jam, but that is not always the case. I found this often that people in the bottleneck were waiting for work, wasting their time. Well, in this video I show how to find the bottleneck with a simple Excel sheet you can create yourself. It's part of the mini course Project Pipelines Decoded. This is how it works. For our bottleneck analysis, we start with setting up a spreadsheet and doing an inventory first, and then we do the bottleneck analysis. Step one is create a workbook in Excel. Step two is put the names of the projects in the first column. Step three, put the names of the resources on the top column. This works fine for a few dozens of resources. For bigger organizations, you have to tweak this a bit. And take note, in many industries and organizations, the most problems are, can be traced back to people who didn't have enough time, too many other things to do. And most conflicts are about the availability of people. So it is okay to focus on people first. But keep in mind, some industry heavily depends on scarce machines, lab, space, materials, whatever. So if that is the case, you might need to include them in your analysis as well. In this example, we focus on just people and very often that is okay. Step three, we're going to prepare a spreadsheet for the next analysis. We add three rows on top of the sheet and one additional column on the left and label them with pipeline, total, subtotal, and percentage. Then per project, enter the effort per project per resource. This is the effort in working days, and it shouldn't take more than 10 to 30 minutes per project on average to collect this information. Ballpark figures will do. We had a couple of simple formulas for the total, for the subtotal and for the percentage to support us in our analysis. The bottleneck reveals itself where the workload or the subtotal has the highest number. This resource needs to process more work than anyone else to get all those projects completed. We put a filter on the project to show only the projects that need to pass this bottleneck. Bottleneck work might be shared between more resources or even within a team. If that is the case, then add also all the projects these resources are involved in to the pipeline. And this creates a multi-resource bottleneck or multi-resource pipeline. When we select the row with the percentages, we can see at the bottom of the screen that we control 64% of all the work. Add the name of this bottleneck resource in the first column. The pipeline is named after the resource in the bottleneck. This is the primary pipeline. We can repeat this process for the secondary pipeline. Hide the projects of the primary pipeline. Now the secondary bottleneck reveals itself by the highest number in the subtotal row. Filter the projects to show only projects of the secondary bottleneck and in column A label these projects with the name of the second bottleneck. When we also hide the project from the secondary bottleneck in column A, we see that only 21% of the work is not covered by one of these pipelines. The remaining projects can be grouped together in one separate pipeline. Once you've found the bottleneck this way, then you might think that you have now to increase capacity of the bottleneck, to give better tools, to do something else to improve it. And it might work, but it is not smart. 
It often takes a long time and it doesn't work when the bottleneck is running empty. But smarter is to speed up projects a little bit to get the bottleneck running when the bottleneck is running empty or to slow down to put some projects on hold when the bottleneck gets stuck. Also to get the bottleneck running again. And this creates a jet stream in the bottleneck. It makes it run 20 to 50% faster and that is also how much you might boost productivity of your entire organization. That is what we have seen in real cases. If you want to learn more about how to quickly improve projects, then start with this mini course, Project Pipelines Decoded. The link is in the description. My name is Jan van Egmond, I'm project management hacker. Thanks for watching.